Okay, we're going to go over how to break uh, Philadelphia Heritage's front line. And you can see they're in there, 4 2 three, one. And you can see that this is actually Real Central's right back. We talked about this with Philly Soccer. The 3 1 is going to form here. And they're actually going to put a guy here. This looks like their midfielder dropping over. This is how we're going to break it. We're going to put an extra man here sometimes uh, to, to assist the, 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 the right back or the left back. But they just executed poorly to break the line. You can see how effective, um, we'll show on the right side how effective it is because you'll see that their center back has the ball and they have this line of three here. Even if they play it to the right back, it's going to be a, their left back is going to be immediately closed down. And to try to play through the middle is crazy, right? With this compact three, you'll see they're a compact three. You're just going to get countered. And this is how Heritage wins a lot of their games, just like Philly Soccer wins a lot of their games like that. There's nowhere to go. He plays it here, he gets closed down immediately. But the weakness is if we switch the ball, look at look at where their left wing is. We can switch it quickly and we can just play around them. And that's how we're going to beat them. We're going to play around them and then into the middle. We're going to go around and then back into the middle. Okay? So you can see that they're having trouble building out. But this is where you can break them because, look, this is their left wing. There's all this space over here if you switch it quickly because they only have a line of three, not a line of four like in a 4-4-2. Four, four, so their weakness is being able to switch side to side. We want to have five in the back to make that much easier to facilitate switches, to stop this um, striker from, from stopping us from switching. We want to have extra players. They could break it right here. This is their midfielder checked out. We're going to have, we could do that, but we're going to have our, a lot of times our winger just drop down. If they're quicker, they could break this line. They're just not fast enough to do it. Okay, it's a weak pass. All right, so let's go over to the board and look at how we're going to break it. Um, so here we go. This is a typical 4-3-3 setup for us. Here's Heritage's 4-2-3-1. Uh, the important thing to note here is, look where I have John Lowe training Hamza. They're going to go high as the 8 and 10 to get a, to get 5-4 um, in the back. It's going to force the 6-8 to make a decision. Do they stay in this space, cover nothing, and leave a 5-4 v against their back line if we send a ball over the top, which would give us a 2-1 v here, a 3-2 v at Noah here. What they'll do is we're going to make them wrong whatever they do. If they drop in to defend it, this gives us space to check into and to run into, which we're going to get to later. That Hamza can come in and create an overload right here, okay? From behind their back so they can't see them. If they stay here, they're covering nothing. They're covering AstroTurf. We love that, okay? So now we have a 5v4 on their back line anytime we want. We can still check into these spaces. So we're going to make them wrong no matter what. What we don't want is John Lowe Train and Hamza just parking here because then it allows everything to move up. And, okay, so we want, to, we want to be back and we want to treat it like we do at practice. That's a zone that you can't stay in. You can only check into and then rotate back out. And then Hamza checks in, into it, rotates back out, okay? Okay, so now let's go over building out. How can we get five in the back? Because this is not five in the back. This is, this is not a bowl-shaped five in the back because Gavin's still here. So the simplest thing is to move Gavin. That's one of the ways. I'm going to show you the other ways. One of the ways is Gavin comes in. Um, first, let's show you what it looks like, actually, when we don't do this. He plays it out to Jason. This guy sits, okay? And you can see here, he just, Gian just gets closed down. Okay? It's too easy to get closed down, all right? And they shift everything over. All right, and now this nine is gonna prevent this switch. It's gonna be a lot harder. So this is how they get you. All right, so let's watch how we're gonna defend it. I mean, how we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna counter this press. So now if we drop Gavin in, okay, this pushes Jason out further, shorter pass distance. It moves Gian higher. It moves Sam higher. And, and keep in mind, everything we do on the left side, we can do on the right side. So now when we play it out, you'll see that we have a 2v1 quicker here. Okay, that's why Gian needs to be already outside, not like that other guy from Real Central where you're slow getting there. We look to break the line. And now we can be patient. And this is where Real Central wasn't. Let him come to you if you want. And then simply, once he gets close, Gian keeps the line of pass. And we simply break the line. Break the line, it's that simple. And look at all the space we have now because Hamza and John Lotrain stayed high. They can, it's an open ball, so now they don't need to. This should just be, play it in. Play a through ball in. All right, you want to avoid Gian and whoever's there uh, driving forward there. 
a lot of times because now you're just letting the whole line drop. Play that ball early and quick and take advantage of the numerical advantage that we had. Okay. So the other way we can do it and get five in the back is by using our wingers. So now that in that situation, Gavin doesn't have to drop in. Okay. So we just use our wingers. All right. So our winger slides down. We'll show up from the left side. Winger slides down. Gian comes in now and becomes an inverted fullback. Sam can stay. We only need one winger if we're going to go to the left side. We can keep Sam high. So this now gives us the same situation. Five in the back. Okay, we still have a high and wide player here. At this moment, Hamza would doesn't have to yet occupy the outside, but he could. Right? He could simply go over here and occupy that width. And so we play it out to Jason, who um, this guy will be back here. So now when we play it to, to Gian, we have the same situation we have with Jason and Gian. Now we have that with Gian and Berlin. We just kind of can wait and we can break the line and now we're off to the races. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. And um, that's it. That's how we're going to break the line. We can do the same thing with Sam on this side. So it duplicates. I'm not going to show you that. All right? So it's two basic ways that we can get uh, three in the back. Um, you know, and also Gavin can drop into the side. So... Keep this in mind too. Um, one, one last way. Gavin can um, do what Gian's been doing a lot. He can just drop into here, which pushes Gian up. Okay? And he can do that the same thing on here. And it's the same situation, right? And then we play to Gavin. Okay? And he plays. And then we're looking to go get exploit this 2v1 against their winger. And wingers are terrible defenders. So this is how, who we're going to exploit. Okay? Makes sense? So there, there are the three basic ways. Gavin drops in the middle. Gavin drops on the side, one of the wingers drops down, and Gavin stays put. It's that simple, guys. We're going to go out and we're going to win this game.